friends for a reaction to The Mandalorian Season 3. Last week on The Mandalorian, we We went to the mines of Mandalore, and spoiler alert, we saw the... What's it called? Mythosaur? <laughs> the Mythosaur. We saw the Mythosaur, and everyone was freaking out about it. I was freaking out about it. Um, that definitely got the biggest reaction out of us last week. Um, and, uh, and as we said last week, this show is just clipping along. We are like at a point where I have no idea what's going to happen in the show because I feel like they pretty much showed everything from the trailers just in the first few episodes. I know that there's some stuff they, you know, that we haven't gotten to yet, but, but generally I have no idea where this plot is going. So I am thrilled, especially because this episode is going to be an hour long. It's almost double the amount of time. Oh as yeah. the first episode. So Dang. this this episode might be the one where they actually pull out all the stops and give us like a fully realized episode. Not that the- This is gonna be a lot. Guys. Yeah, yeah. Get not, ready. not that the last episodes were not fully realized episodes, but I just mean like, I feel like there's a lot that they have to set up um, for this season if it's going to deliver the kind of epic thrills that we would want it to and so uh and so yeah this uh this episode is going to be promising for sure um we love the mandalorian we kind of cut our star wars teeth on the mandalorian i mean i grew up watching star wars and enjoying star wars but after we got married the mandalorian is really what threw us into the star wars fandom and made us in love with Star Wars. So we are so here for this season. Um, Which is why we chose a season of The Mandalorian to be on our poster back there. Yes, yes. Um, Transition. She's uh, she's bringing up the fact that Movie Palette, the company Movie Palette, sent us a uh, poster that we put up on our wall. They take frames from different movies and TV shows and make a special art piece out of it. So we chose The Mandalorian. They also gave us a discount code. That's Mandalorian15. If you want to order from Movie Palette a special art piece of your own. So Mandalorian15 is your code for... Uh, your discount code to get your own movie palette. Thanks, movie palette, for sending us that poster. We also want to invite you to join our Patreon to support the channel. Um, as we continue to grow the channel, we will be giving more benefits on Patreon. For now, it's just helping to support the channel, financially back it so that we can invest a little bit more time into our YouTube channel. We love producing content for YouTube, connecting with you guys regarding all things Star Wars and different nerdy things that we love. So if you enjoy watching us and if you enjoy our presence on YouTube, please join us there on Patreon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to receive notifications for our, our latest videos. And without further ado, here is episode three of The Mandalorian. Ooh. Oh, okay. pick it up right here. right where we left off. She's dead. She's having an existential crisis. Yep. She's a changed woman. <laughs> she just had a spiritual awakening. You are Mandalorian again. Wow. <laughs> Can we leave now? Uh, she's not going to say it. Does he not remember what just happened? He wasn't there. He wasn't awake for it, I don't think. He, he just got knocked out right away? Something? Did you see anything alive? Alive? Like what? Nothing. Yep. Why? Get out of here. Why not, why not mention it? Because this might be her um, claim back to royalty if she can tame the mythosaur oh. or kill it or something. But, interesting. She, she wants to keep her cards close to the chest. Yeah, but like, how would that grant her power? Well... If she rides the Mythosaur, I think that's even more ancient um, than the Dark Saber is, as far as like Bring the legendariness of way. riding the Mythosaur. Will that make we'll people follow gratitude. her though? Yeah, it might. I would invite you in for a feast, but I'm guessing that helmet isn't coming off again. This is the way. She has her helmet on still. Looks like a squadron of Tie Interceptors. Tie Intercept. What? Random. Why are the Imperials attacking them? Wow. Right into the action. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Sick. Yeah. Whoa. 
No! That's yes. awesome. Yes! That is so cool! Get it! Oh! Come on, hurry up, hurry up! Woo! Fast takeoff! Ah, oh, yes. The stall, then drop. Love it. Die! Ooh! Wow! Whoa! Dang! Wow, that felt so Star Wars. Love that was it. just like mm. perfect Star Wars. Not bad for now. I'm seeing something on the scope. <gasps> Are they bombing the castle? No. Whoa! Whoa! No. Oh, sad. Let's go first bomb my home. Dank Ferric. Dank Ferric. Get revenge. Die. Destroy them. Oh. Oh. No. oh. We've got company. You have to get out of there. Yeah, they're no, trying no. to draw her out. Well, she's got to come off of her brooding throne now. I know. She has no choice. Man, that was a big opening. The convert. The convert. Is that Bo? Is she the convert? Ooh. Coruscant! Ooh. Wow. We're back. Wow. That's exactly what I said in Andor when we, when we uh, went to Coruscant, word for word, just like that. Coruscant, Whoa. we're back. Oh, I was like, Coruscant, we're back. I can't believe it's so this. It's so pretty. Dude, this is from Revenge of the Sith. That shot, like, well, they're going to the opera house. You, the Bruh. Saved my life. So the amnesty the program? The oh. Dude, this is the opera house. A second chance. Oh. That Palpatine oh, yeah. and Anakin. Yeah. I believe the pursuit of knowledge is the most noble thing someone can do. What is going on here? Intent on using cloning technology to secure more power for himself. Work of my past. He's giving a TED talk. To help the new <laughs> in whatever way I can. Though that when I was young, I lost my mother. Wow. It's quite fast, almost immediate. Hello, but He's got complete amnesty. That's crazy. The government that appreciates your contribution. <laughs> the outer rim, I can't imagine. You know, I was almost drafted. Imagine me serving. Oh, darling, that was the Empire. Oh, <laughs> my apologies. Empire, Rebels, New Republic, I can't keep track. That's <laughs> why I should just keep my mouth shut. We try not to get involved. She's an inspiration. I'm so glad you're working Wow, everyone loves now. him. Yeah, this is weird. Have a good evening. Getting Andor vibes from this. When uh, Cyril was like walking, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. These are all Amnesty Imperials. Mm -hmm. Amnesty scientist L fifty two. You're new. It's weird. What do you mean? G sixty eight. Oh. Mm. Doctor. Sus vibes. Yeah, I think he recognizes her. Like story. She worked for Moff Gideon. Yeah. To a mind flare. Mind flare. I try not to think about him anymore. Long live the New Republic. Long, Long live, live the, the New, new Republic. Republic. This is creepy. It's very creepy. It's not how the Empire would have handled it. No. No, it is not. The yellow travel biscuits from the <laughs> Russian <laughs> guys. <laughs> yes. Oh, that brings back memories. Ah. Hey, though, I like the red ones. Oh. You're crazy. Travel biscuits. All right, well, do that. It's so interesting the like mm. tiny details. Yeah. Okay. That they're exploring. What do you think they're setting up? Like I don't know, but this girl. Yeah. Wants something. I don't know. I don't know. Oh no. Uh, buddy. Don't don't do it. No, nope, uh, just ooh. close the door. Just ooh, close the door. No, Turn it's, around. It's creepy. Go I, away. I don't like it. <gasps> don't open the box. Don't open the box. Don't. Touch the box. It has a bomb in it. 
Oh, oh. It's the biscuits. Yeah. Who did this? It was clearly the girl. Yeah, but why? Hey, these look like the cubicles from Andor again. Yeah. This feels like very much like Andor when Cyril oh, was in those cubicles. I saw your talk mm. last night. Really interesting stuff. So they're having him do menial work even yeah. though he's a scientist. Dude, I love how this is like so much like Andor in that like the cubicles and the like This is very interesting. The empire and the conversations between high society members and like interesting. You're melting. Those are cool popsicles. Overwhelming. They're glowing. Yeah. I trained here at the academy. Not much has changed. Search here. I don't think it's something the New Republic would be interested in. The ethics of cloning are complicated. But if blindly is how we got in trouble in the first place, sometimes you have to trust your gut. In your public. What is that? Da -da. You hear the song? Yeah, I hear it. The peak of Umate, the highest mountain on Coruscant. What? There's a mountain? What is this? It's the only place on the entire surface where you can see the planet itself. What? Oh my gosh. That's, is this new lore? That's weird. I've never heard of this before. That's the peak of a mountain. You want to touch it? Dun, 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 no, no, we allow it. No. Allowed? The fact that they're doing that background song. <laughs> He's smiling. At the same time that like I'm learning this stuff about Coruscant, like this is weird. It's a little trippy. I'm kind of wigging out. This is like wigging me out, guys. What's gonna happen? Don't touch it. <laughs> Please refrain from physical <laughs> contact. With so movement. sorry. Distant schedule. Yes. Are you experiencing any? This is weird. They have robot like personal? counselors. Yeah. No. Have interlinked. You any feelings interlinked. Of anger or resentment? If I were to pursue my own research recreationally, would that be allowed? According to your file, your previous research involved cloning and genetic engineering. That class of research is expressly prohibited by the Chorus and Accords. Section yeah, especially after the clone seven. army and all this stuff we're seeing in the Bad Batch have having to do with the clones and stuff. Have New Republic nice having a lot of the flavors of the Empire in their vibes. I mean, I guess he is kind of a war criminal. Yeah. But Yes. But yeah. <laughs> I guess he's kind of a war criminal. <laughs> Maybe it makes sense. I've been thinking about Oh, he's so vulnerable and she's a snake. I know it's important. You can tell. You can tell. Like it can actually be used for Have you experienced any feelings of anger or resentment towards the New Republic government or its representatives? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Apologies. See, he's touching his ear. Let's go get it. Good. Tomorrow night? That sound? The whole... That's totally the opera, the opera from Revenge of the Sith sound. That totally was, it resembled it so much. What? You, like the, that's like a Sith, like, I'm just telling you, that's my, um, that's my, uh, oh, 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 man. It's the right thing to do. Mm. Dude, it totally sounds like it. Yeah. Like when he's telling him about the midichlorian stuff. Yeah. Uh, and and um, when is... Palpatine is talking to Anakin and everything. This is weird. I'm telling you, that's an Easter egg. You wanted to see me, Chancellor. Oh, buddy. He's so pure. He's so just like he a little pure. child. Yeah. He's just like, he's just being there manipulated by people. Disposal yards. Tongs days. Am I right? Oh, gosh. Hi, guys. We'll work on that. Uh, end of the line.
What? Oh. Wow. I guess it was supposed to be slowing down. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's weird to think about the logistics. Yeah. Of a government takeover. I've done anything like that. Creepy. Dude. Moff Gideon's just standing there in the dark. He's like, welcome yeah. back to Dr. Pershing. <laughs> it's time to resume your work. I didn't really have a chance to think about it. Look at how her face is in the shadow. Um, what was that? Just the ship settling. Keep packing. She's totally expecting someone right now. Yeah. What is she going to do to him? We don't. <laughs> Turn off your flashlights. <laughs> right. Honestly. Oh. oh man. Stop. Okay, maybe not what we thought. I feel like I kept assuming that she was gonna like take him once he got all of his stuff or whatever. No, she's a double agent. She's a double agent. Wait, what? This was a setup. For what? I don't know. She was working with them. Raise your hands, L52. It was a setup. What? I don't know why. Good morning, Doctor. Why? What the heck? I can explain. I was. What's happening? What did she tell you? We understand that the. Oh. Uh, oh. What? What's going on? Uh, this is a mind flare. What? What's going on? It's a non-invasive voltage. It can be used what? to help soothe select traumatic memory. Oh. What? Oh no. You'll see something. This but is we'll weird. Only take a moment. This is so creepy. I'll be here when you wake up. You don't understand. She brought me there. It was a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> she sent me up. Please. What is happening? She looks so evil. Yeah. What is she? Is she mind controlled? Like, what is happening? I nice to know that for every failure, there's a success like you. What the I heck? Offer him some relief. I'm so unsettled. Uh, Stop. Uh, Stop. Uh -uh. No. I hate this. What? Wow, the New Republic is almost just as bad as the Empire. Uh, yeah, what do you expect? <laughs> <gasps> what? No! What is she doing? Doing. Oh my gosh! What What's was that? I'm so confused. We haven't seen uh, Katie Sackhoff's face once this entire episode. Mm -hmm. Oh! Yes! Jaren claims to have bathed. Oh, it's all coming together, guys. I have proof. <laughs> Groku's just chilling. I know. Ooh. He speaks the truth. What? These are indeed the living waters. And have you removed your helmet since? Just you have a choice to make. I have not. She's uh she's playing her cards very close to the chest. Mm. But see, well, she has an end game. Of Clan mm. You're one of us. Wow. Okay. They're all welcoming them. What is Bo Katan playing at, I wonder? Yep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sick! Mm. Oh man. 
Oh yeah. Wow, this episode had everything. The song is so good. Man, that, uh, <laughs> that, whoever is playing that um, Imperial, that's clearly still bad. Um, she gives a really scary deadpan face, I feel like. Very sinister at the end right there. And my boy, Dr. Pershing, is he like, all right? Is he gonna be okay? I, like, they made us- mind playing him. They made us like him. Boggle it. Boggle it. <laughs> I feel horrible. And what was the whole point of it? Why? Why did she do that? She wants to destroy him. Do you think that was, it was like a loose end that like they want to tie up or something because they know that he's just like chill and he'll like just be cool with the new Republic and you know what I mean? Like, so they're like, oh, we need his like, we need to like tie these loose ends or are they mind flying him so that he'll be totally susceptible to whatever, to whatever they'll want him to do basically in the future, like to work for the Imperial Remnant or something. You know what I mean? For Moff Maybe, Gideon but he was gonna do his... Um, I mean, he was gonna do his research anyway. I know, but like he was like, no, I'm re like, I'm reformed. I'm like part of the New Republic. Like I wanna help the New Republic, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he didn't wanna help the Empire, but they're like, we need your mind, but we don't have your loyalty, so we're gonna mind flay you. And then get your loyalty. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like if that's what that was or something. Yeah, it but could be. I, I was, I'm also wondering if like there are seeds of the Imperial Remnant in the New Republic itself. That was something that I was like wondering: was is she just someone who's undercover, or is there's like a number of different people who are like undercover in the New Republic as well? I'm sure it's a little bit of both. You know what I mean? It's like a sandwich. This episode is a sandwich between the stuff going on with Mando and Bo-Katan. And then this Dr. Pershing so thing where they're talking people, about the villains and stuff. Two people who have some sort of ulterior motives that they're plotting. Her and bo -Katan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's a parallel. The mind fly stuff was super creepy. Yeah, especially when she turned up the dial. And you're just like, oh no. It was reminiscent of the torture device used in Andor to make what's-her-name go crazy. The sounds, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of like that. I mean, it really does feel like it's no different from, from the Empire. It's just a different title and a different label slapped on it, but it's just the Empire. There's like a under, there's an undertone or this kind of like hidden theme in the in the episode where they, I, I I'm dissecting the episode a little bit. They keep saying like, oh, we're different from the Empire and like things aren't like they used to be in the Empire. Long we're, live the new Republic. We're good now. We're, yeah, we're good. Like that, that's like, but they're having like, they're basically like making the, these people, these, uh, you know, these amnesty. Um, amnesty people go through these programs where they're like, obviously if you're a war criminal, you're gonna have some restricted freedoms but they're like going through these like rigorous testings and then they're like, um, you know, they're the high society people are like, oh, new Republic, empire, you rebels. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the difference is. You know what I mean? Who like cares? who cares? And then, and then he's like working in these cubicles where he's just doing this like menial work where people are like, oh yeah, the people like upstairs, like I, I can't do anything about this. Like, there's no opinions here. Like, you're just working for the government. And it totally is like, like, and then they have this like torture device that like the mind flayer thing. And they're like, this is no different. There's like an irony there in the story. And this fits mm, so perfectly with mm. Andor. So perfectly. Because it's like, they're like, oh, we're good again. Yay. And then it's like, they're they're showcasing all the things that we saw in Andor during the Repub during the Empire. You know what I mean? He's worried like like they're drawing these parallels to where it's like when that guy was so perfect, he was like, I don't I don't really know what the difference is between the rebels and the new republic and the empire. Like I I don't I don't know what's going on. And then you have these things where like all of this like um 
you know, very, very grid, like, uh, not gridlocked, um, that's not the right word, uh, you know, this very, like, structured government is, like, bearing down this, like, big state, this big brother state is, like, bearing down on them still, even though they overthrew the empire, you know what I mean? And so for him, and I know, I'm, I don't want to be hyperbolic there, obviously the New Republic is not the empire and its structure, but the structures of the empire are still in place. And I think that that's kind of what all of that episode was trying to showcase was like the part of what makes the new Republic so weak is that it really is just carryover from the empire. Oh man, it's the writing is so deep. I'm like my, as my brain is, the gears are turning, my brain is processing even the whole thing where it's like, Oh, touch the, touch the rock. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. like touch this semblance of life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The semblance of natural, like the world beneath the world underneath. And he's like, he's going to touch it in this like fun and imaginative curiosity moment. And then it's like, do not touch. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like this, the police robots are like. She literally says it's not the empire. And then this I know, comes out. I know, like, dude, the writing of this episode is so good because of like the, like, it's so nuanced, but it's clear, you know, like it's clear what they're communicating is that is that the New Republic is just as, um, it's not this kind of free society in the same way that, you know, they want, the, you People would, thought you when would they were think. like, we suffer. I know, right, when they're like, the empire is over. Um, it's not, it's, you know, like the ills and the sins of the empire were there in the Clone Wars days, and they're there after the Empire. You know what I mean? Like, the Empire didn't necessarily start when Palpatine declared it had begun, and it didn't necessarily end at his death. You know what I mean? Like, they still have this big centralized Big Brother government that is bearing down on them um, to the point where, you know, like, this (laughs) this Mon Cala... That's like our first sinister Mon Calo we've ever seen. He's like, I'm going to torture you and it's going to be great. I loved it. I, I loved it. Um, yeah, it's it's strange. Um, it's 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 definitely unique um, that we got to experience all of that side of the story in this episode. But I'm I'm really here for it. So what do you think they're doing? Do you think that they are definitely connecting this to the sequel trilogy? And the idea of these are all like the Imperial remnant that uh, are involved with that will turn into the First Order. Or is this something completely different having think, to do maybe with Thrawn and stuff like that? No, I think I think that's what they're setting up because like they're literally showing us all of these post Imperials and saying, oh, what do you miss about the Empire? What do you miss? And they're all reflecting on the Empire and they have this sort of warm feelings for their days in the Empire a little bit. like. Mm. And this girl clearly is involved with something bigger than herself. And she's like, she has a plan. We know Palpatine is behind the scenes, you know, orchestrating stuff. And we know his work is with cloning. So it's obvious that he's wanting to use him. Yeah, I just think it it might be a nice rug pull for the viewers if we recognize, if we're able to recognize eventually in some twist fashion that none of this really has to do with the sequel trilogy maybe in some offshoot fashion like eventually it leads into sequel trilogy stuff but the actual conflicts themselves have nothing to do with the sequel trilogy you know what i mean like maybe by the end of these conflicts there will be like all of the seeds will be there for what happens in the sequel trilogy but ultimately what happens in this show has doesn't really, you know, it's its own thing. It's with Thrawn. It's its own conflict. I feel like that. I don't know if would they're going to introduce kind of, Thrawn. I feel like I'm. I don't know. If that's I'm just happen. saying that would be a nut. So like re, like theory or um, twist would be if by the end of this season, everyone has been talking about how oh, this has to do with the sequel trilogy and oh, this is leading up to the sequel trilogy. And again, I'm not saying that it doesn't have to have like things that are connected to the sequel trilogy. I'm just saying that what if ultimately it's like Moff Gideon is working for Thrawn and this lady is working for Thrawn. It's not necessarily that they're like all like that they all think that they're going to turn into the first order or something because you have to think about this. In canon, 
Palpatine's first order is already in the unknown regions building up the first order. So they already are like beyond the like the known galaxy and they are like gathering their resources and stuff like that. Like they had all I think he already had like contingency imp- imperials like sent ahead of him in case this thing needed to happen. Granted Thrawn is also in the unknown regions with Ezra. I'm just saying I feel like it would be very, very cool if if there was a rug pull and if it was like, okay, Moff Gideon works directly with Thrawn and it's, again, not that it's not connected to the sequel trilogy, but that it's not that, oh yeah, all roads lead to the sequel trilogy. You know what I mean? I'd like this to have its own plot mm-hmm. beside whatever happens in the sequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. That, I guess That's all I'm saying. I know, like... Again, obviously they're planting seeds. They're planting seeds for the cloning and the stuff that happens in the sequel trilogy with Palpatine uh, and and Snoke and stuff like that. But I just feel like they can be like setting that up without directly connecting. So anyway, that's my. Yeah, it's more clever to and not just be like, okay, now we're gonna show you a shot of a, you know, a Snoke clone. Yeah. In you know floating in this tube right you know what that means guys because you've seen it this is it's connected right exactly but instead have it be a little more it'd be it'd be a lot more interesting if that was like an easter egg but not a i mean we already did see something floating in a container right when in last season there was that shot of of a body in a container right Mm. so and again that's connected to the cloning stuff i'm just saying People like it'd be cool if it was like if it had those subtle connections. But again, ultimately, there's a greater mastermind plot going on. Like the end goal of the villains is not the sequel trilogy. I guess that's my main argument is like I hope that the main goal of the villains of this show is not necessarily what happens in the sequel trilogy, but instead something else that we don't know about. Because if it is what happens in the sequel trilogy, then there's no real tension for us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because we ultimately know what they're up to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But if they're up to something else that at some point or another gets connected to what happens in the sequel trilogy, but ultimately that's not what their aim is. It's this other thing. Mm-hmm. Then there's that tension of like, okay, we need to see where this is going. And there's surprises for us and it's, you know, in store for us. That's all I'm saying. That's my hope. So... Does that make sense? Because I feel like what they're doing with this Imperial stuff is really, is really interesting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The mystery of it, the fact that it connects to Andor, like is a big surprise that this episode resembled Andor so much to me. You know what yeah. I mean? I felt like I was watching Andor during all of that middle section. Yeah. Bo-Katan is in the... Convert? She's, Covert? She's in the club now. Yeah. So... She doesn't have a home anymore, also. Yeah. So she's gonna have to deal with this. Yeah. I wonder if she cares though. Like, like obviously she was upset, but we know her end goal is the fact that she saw the mythosaur. Mm-hmm. And she's gonna do something to make she it so that- She believes Mandalore is not cursed. And that there's like, but does she think that like they're gonna go back and live there? I mean, it's like really. I don't know, cause she definitely has connections with the other Mandalorians, not just that, just not just that group, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think what she wants to do is she, cause if you remember, like, there's a lot of Mandalorians. Most Mandalorians are not like this Din Djarin sect. Mm-hmm. Like you have the whole Sabine clan right? All of her people, all of the other clans beyond like that were shown in Rebels Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that's, those are the people that Bo-Katan runs with, right? Mm -hmm. But they're all in their separate, you know, separate lives. They're all doing their own thing. You know what I mean? So I think what she ultimately wants to do is she does want to rally them to go populate Mandalore again under her authority i mean why not she she is the rightful heir by blood at least so she's thinking like how can i reclaim and restore my family name Mm -hmm. and now she's given that opportunity somehow something's something's going on in her head where she's 
trying to figure out what she's going to do yeah. to rally. Yeah. No, you know, she's basically thinking like, hey, I'm not a bad person. I'm not going to necessarily challenge Din Djarin. I think she could easily beat him in a battle mm-hmm. for the Darksaber. Uh, especially after we saw how she how good she was last episode. Mm-hmm. I think she could easily beat him. But she, I think she's just like, I'm not going to challenge him, you know, um, for whatever reason. Um, but she, maybe she's like, you know, if I can do something with the mythosaur, then, then I can, uh, reclaim well, Mandalore. The, the mythosaur thing name. was on the wall, like, she, like, those people clearly respect the old ways, so she's thinking these traditional, this traditional plan, if I can get them on my side, yeah. then I can go, like, build from there. Yeah. Like, a new clan. And have more people come to me, like basically. You maybe. Know? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Well, so, I'm excited. Good stuff. This this episode pulled out all the stops and um, really, really got me intrigued to see what they're doing with this plot line. And and the reason I keep bringing up Thrawn and the reason I'm holding out hope for Thrawn is we know he's going to be in the Ahsoka show. But his first name drop was in The Mandalorian. So either that name drop yeah, was, was just Ahsoka. Okay. So either that name drop was just a uh, just a Easter egg or like a tie to the Ahsoka show, which would, in my opinion, would be amazing, but which also would make like sense if it was Ahsoka. Yeah, but it would be cheaper if that wasn't also connected to the Mandalorian is kind of my point you know what i mean if they're doing a if they're truly doing an interconnected thing then i would like it so that you know that where is grand admiral thrawn um line you know ultimately was part of the grander story of the mandalorian not just a seed of her show you know so anyway well, guys, this was an amazing episode. We really enjoyed it, and we want to hear what you think. So leave a comment below. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us what you enjoyed. Tell us what you think is going to happen next, what you think is going on with these different storylines, what greater plot is at work here. Um, there's a lot to uncover and a lot of questions. So excited to see what you guys think. So hit the like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe. And hit notifications to be notified of our next reaction. And we will see you next week. See you next week.